If you have a Retina MacBook Pro like this one, you need this upgrade. So if you have a Retina MacBook Pro, basically the pre-2016 Retinas without the touch bar or the new butterfly keyboards, then you've probably noticed that your machine runs a little bit hot and the fans are quite loud. So this is a common problem on Apple laptops or really any laptops as most manufacturers tend to use really cheap thermal compound on the CPU and GPUs. This crappy thermal compound leads to the fans running more and the computer running hotter. Now one of the most effective ways to mitigate this problem is by repasting the CPU with better thermal paste. And I've talked about this a few times on this channel as it pertains to unibody MacBooks. But today I want to talk specifically about Retina MacBook Pros because Quite frankly, they're really, really easy. So it's pretty common knowledge that the unibody MacBooks are really great for upgradability. They have replaceable RAM, they have replaceable hard drives, batteries, CD drives. The displays are cheap, the parts are cheap. They're really great for upgrading. Retina MacBook Pros, on the other hand, have soldered RAM, proprietary SSDs, and batteries that are glued to the top case. So general convention would tell you that they are very, very hard to upgrade. And for the most part, that's true, except for a few key areas. So all of the actual components of this computer, while they might not be upgradable, are very easy to replace. It's just a few screws to pull out a logic board. The SSD is held in with one screw. It's a pretty simple process, although it's more expensive and less upgradable, if you will. But there is one really, really, really important factor that makes repasting the CPU a breeze on Retina MacBook Pros. And that is that the heatsink is actually on the bottom of the motherboard. So if you open up a unibody MacBook Pro, you'll see a whole bunch of the ICs on the bottom of the motherboard, which is going to be facing you as you take the bottom of the case off. So in order to get to the heatsink, you have to take the logic board out because it's trapped under the keyboard. However, if you open a Retina MacBook Pro, the heatsink is just right in front of you and can be pulled off without taking out the motherboard. This means that repasting the CPU is the easiest thing you could possibly do in terms of working on this computer. So what I'm gonna do today is walk you through the process for repasting the CPU or the GPU if you have a 15 inch with dedicated graphics on these Retina MacBook Pros because it's really easy and it will provide you a lot better performance and better temperatures. So for this video, I'm going to be demonstrating on this late 2013 13 inch Retina MacBook Pro. This is one of the easiest procedures as the heatsink is very small and only goes over one fan, but the procedure isn't really that different when you step up to a 15 inch or something with dedicated graphics because, you know, it's just a couple more screws and a little bit more thermal paste. So the other reason for doing this on a 13 inch Retina is these are the most popular MacBook Pro Retinas out there and they all have mostly the same design. If you have a late 2013, mid 2014, or early 2015 13 inch MacBook Pro, the procedure is going to be exactly the same because the internal layout is the same. So let's go ahead and get started, but first I wanna run Cinebench on this machine to check the performance. So at this point I have the machine powered off and we are ready to crack it open. So these screws on the bottom of this computer are a little bit different than what you're going to see on most things. It's a Pentalobe P5 screwdriver. So this screw bit is a little bit different than most computers use. Um, I know it's becoming more popular but you probably don't have a screwdriver that will work just lying around. So this, this screwdriver bit is from an iFixit toolkit, which comes with it because a lot of people use iFixit toolkits to repair Apple stuff. So I highly recommend picking up one of those. Okie dokie, and now we will pull off the bottom plate. There are tabs right about here, so it's not going to just come off automatically. You'll hear it pop and then we'll be ready to get inside. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is peel back this battery warning tape and disconnect the battery from the logic board. We don't want to have any power going to it during this. Now next we'll draw our attention over here to the heatsink and you'll notice there's this rubber gasket that's just gonna peel right off. 
Keep in mind that it does go around the heatsink, so we're gonna wanna save this and put it back on. And next up, you're gonna notice there are these little rubber feet on the screw heads of at least some of the heatsink tops, so make sure you pull those off. They're not really necessary, so I'm just gonna put them off to the side and we'll see if they will go back on when we're done. So for removing the heatsink itself, we're going to need a Torx T5 screwdriver, which will allow us to wheel off these screws really quickly here. Now we're not quite done yet because with those four screws removed, there is still one more Phillips head screw just holding the other end of the heatsink in. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that out and then we can remove the heatsink. All right, so as you can see, this thermal paste is absolutely disgusting. It's absolutely all over the CPU die. It's flaky, it's crusty, it's not where it's supposed to be. And there's even blank spots on the CPU die. You can see the reflection of my screwdriver. That's really not good. That means that we're getting no contact there at all, which is really, really bad. Okay, so I'm gonna use my microfiber cloth as well as the edge of this spudger to peel away as much of this gross, gunky thermal paste as I can. We want this to be as clean as possible so we can start fresh with a new coat of thermal paste. Alright, so as you can see, it's looking a lot better now that we're free of all that crappy thermal paste. You can see how reflective the CPU die is. That's what we want to see. You'll also notice there's this black plastic that covers the rest of the CPU itself. Now this is nice because it means that we're not going to get any thermal paste on the green PCB down here. So that's very good that that's included on this model. But we're not quite done yet because I still want to get all of the thermal paste off of the heatsink itself. You can see this is a lot easier because we're not dealing with a delicate component like a CPU die. Okay, so as you can see, we've now got the CPU die and the heatsink nicely cleaned up. We are ready for a fresh application of thermal paste. And really, I am surprised how bad the thermal paste is on these laptops. These are expensive devices. Granted, this one is a base model. This one was about $1,300 new. But you'd think that on expensive components like this, you could at least put some good thermal paste. It really would make a big difference in the performance of these machines when they were new. So today I'm going to be using Cooler Master High Performance Thermal Compound. I got this at Micro Center for about six bucks. So it's really not an expensive upgrade to make, but it makes a big old difference. Now you do have to be a little bit careful when applying this. You don't want to over apply. That's really all we need, and I'm just going to take the pointy end of this spudger here and get it spread just a little bit. You don't have to do this because the heat sink is going to do a pretty good job of spreading it out, but I like to just make sure that we get an even application here. So you can already see the difference in the color between this thermal paste and that crap that was on here before. And you don't even really need this much compound, it's just a little bit hard to get it out of the tube in small amounts, so this should just be fine. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and rest the heatsink on there, we want to make sure that it's all lined up, okie dokie, alrighty, that's good. I'm going to go ahead and screw in this side of the heatsink so we get that down nice and good. And then one thing that I like to do when screwing on the heatsink is you don't want to screw each side in completely all at once because we don't want to put uneven pressure on the CPU die. So I'm going to screw these in one at a time and then tighten them all down. Alright, so now that we have the heatsink reattached on all points, we're going to put the little rubber gasket around the sides of the heatsink. Alright, there we go, perfect. And now before we are quite finished, we want to plug the battery back in and put the warning sticker back on just to have it around. There we go. And we are now ready to screw the back onto this machine. You'll hear those snaps, that's how you know that you've got the case back on. 
Okay, so that's how you repaste a MacBook Pro. You can see it's really not that complicated a procedure, and it's going to make the CPU run a lot better. So already running Cinebench, we're seeing the scores go from about 256 to somewhere in the 260s, which isn't a huge improvement, but the big one is the temperatures, which have dropped about 10 degrees Fahrenheit, which is really great. Now, obviously, this isn't going to make a humongous difference, but even keeping the CPU temps down by just a few degrees will keep the CPU running at its full clock speed for a lot longer without throttling. So if you do have a Retina MacBook Pro like mine, I highly recommend doing this. It's so easy, it cost me six bucks, and I still have a whole tube of thermal paste that I can use on other things as well, but it's just... It's an easy thing to do and it really will help improve your computer's performance and cooling. So that'll do it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. As usual, make sure to follow me on Twitter at Luke Miani. Don't forget to join my subreddit if you have any questions or concerns about buying, selling, or repairing Mac computers. And of course, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next video.